So Nick, uh, we met a few years ago, I think it was on one of my forums, uh, you I think probably arrived in a Jhana support group or something like right. that. Right, and, uh, so, right. And so this is a case history with uh, a subject, Nick, who uh, is, how old are you? 28. 28 years old. And uh, Nick, you've been, uh, when did you begin practicing meditation? Um, at around 20, 21 years okay. of age. So. And you said you were 28? Yeah, 28. <laughs> okay. so All right, so. Good, good seven, years seven years of consistent practice. All right, excellent. And uh, can, what would you call consistent practice? Please describe that. Um, a minimum of meditating morning and night. Um, and a minimum time would be, you know, 30 to 40 minutes when I wake up in 30 to 40 minutes when I go to bed. Okay. I uh, usually though I try to I mean I I prefer because I enjoy it so much to to get in a couple hours. So over a couple hours. So three sessions would be preferable and uh maybe an hour each would be ideal. Okay. And so what is it that you define as enjoyable when you practice meditation? Um so we've gotten so what we've gotten so far is is that you've been practicing meditation for about seven or eight years and you've been practicing fairly consistently on the two to three times a day and you prefer to meditate you know let's say upwards of an hour per session and you're getting something out of that experience and that, and that so we're moving forward on that case history so now what I would like to know is, is um, what is it that you define as a, a positive experience in meditation? And I don't really care about the technique or okay, the method. Okay, so energy is, is, a, is a big thing. I mean, as, as soon as I'm able to get into a fairly deep state, uh, I... Well, okay, so let's uh, let's slow down here because we're moving too fast all of a sudden. Uh -huh. So you, so when you meditate, you experience you do you experience something that you define as a deep state. Mm -hmm. So can you define that deep state for us? Yeah, that deep state would be uh, where you experience. Where not not where you, but where I experience. Where I experience uh, equanimity. I'm, you know, I'm neither. I'm just in a very contented state where I'm not seeking anything else. I'm just resting completely in myself, and uh, it's like a there's like a huge well of energy that comes from putting yourself in that in that rested state, and it just it, I mean it's okay. Before we go any further. Uh, that's good. So now, are you aware of? Uh, the, I, see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask a series of questions that that are going to elicit answers that are yeah. significant. And so now, when you're in that state of equi that you defined as equanimity, and you define that equanimity in um, in a particular way, and I'm not going to try and repeat what you just said, but it, but it's good, and that's how I would define equanimity. So then, uh, when you're in that state, are you at all aware that you, of your physical body or your surroundings? There's definitely degrees of being in this state. It's uh, you mean uh, degrees of awareness of the outside world? Yeah, degrees of awareness of the outside world, and also degrees of depth of being in this state. I mean, you sometimes you can just be dead center right on it to the point where I mean uh, temporarily not at all at all aware of the physical body or you know cognitive thoughts or anything like that but well, okay. I can also be aware of those things and in that state to a lesser okay. degree hmm. okay well it sounds like we need to uh, peel apart that experience a little bit more so when you say that you're not at all aware of the physical body does that uh, and it's a surroundings does that mean that um, that it's not a body experience or and maybe I need to define that a little bit are you saying that 
that maybe you're in a black sense uh, of domain of that's completely and utterly sensory free, no, no uh, sensory experience whatsoever, other than this thing that you're calling equanimity, or are we calling it just shades of gray of of uh, withdrawal from the. Uh, from the sensory domain. Well, during the peak of absorption. Uh, but I'm just looking at that equanimity stage. Because uh, there's oh, lots of stages, right, that you're right, you're going to define right, right. for us. So I'm just talking about the equanimity stage. When you feel that you've arrived at a particular depth that you're calling equanimity, um, which is, it sounds to me like some kind of withdrawal from the sensory domain. Yeah. And uh, and this is prior to the arising of energy. Yep. Uh, is now when you're in that equanimity phase, um, is is there some level, relative level of awareness of the physical senses in the in the external world, or is, has it been completely phased? Um, there'd be some level of like you, I know notice sounds and I would, but they would. They wouldn't be, I wouldn't be engaged in them. I would just be like a pleasantly able to observe. Or, uh, yeah, they're not. So in other words, they're not pulling you away not, from your they, no, the hooks, meditation. Yeah, and same thing with thoughts too. Like right. they'll like gently bubble away okay, if they so arise. Okay, so you're having some the, thoughts, but they arise and fall and bubble away. Yeah, if, you know, if, like, a sound triggered a thought or something, okay. it just, like, nothing sticks in that it, it's... Okay. Uh, so the thoughts are intermittent with periods of silence in between. Yeah, yeah, it'd be like you might hear something and it might somehow trigger something and but then it would all go away, or sometimes it would just be nothing okay. for long periods of time. Well, your description is consistent with my uh, description of equanimity or experience of it.